it does a pretty good job on its own if I'm not touching it and it doesn't make me look drunk. So what about people that don't have any emotional connection to their cars? That's gonna bring me over to this. This is a brand new 2020 Subaru Legacy. And I'll tell you, if you need any help being emotionally detached from a vehicle, I would highly recommend this. It is a car, that is it. In fact, it made me sick when I drove it for the first time. And I don't mean that figuratively. It's so smooth. It's so almost unreasonably smooth that if you were to get, if you get seasick, I think this would make you nauseous. I've gotten used to it a little bit. I've put a couple hundred miles on it now, and I think I can talk about it objectively. I was, I was like bitterly angry at it, but I figured this is my karmic penance for having gotten pulled over the other day in that 911. So let's take a ride in this legacy and we can talk about the ins and outs of having a normal car and CBT. And, and maybe this is the answer to like, if you have a GT3 or some really fast car that you don't want to always be getting pulled over in, you buy this, it, I swear to God, this will just neuter your need for speed. You will drive 35 miles per hour in a 35 mile an hour zone and you will shake your fist at anybody going faster. Let's try to come at this car in an objective way uh, or just, you know, ordinary cars in general because what I don't want this to be is like, oh, some elitist guy who loves sports cars talking about, you know, Accords and Camrys. That's, that's not fair. It's not, it makes no sense. It doesn't help anybody. Big, big old touchscreen. This car, like I said, this car has insane technology. It really does. I'm, I'm genuinely impressed with the amount of car you get for under $30,000 today. The first thing you notice about this car when you get in and you're like, I'm going for a test drive is this shifter. It is not a pleasant experience. It feels like you're breaking it. It feels like you are just wrecking this thing which you would think um you know an engineer or somebody who's trying to win the business that's an easy way to win business you know nice touch points good uh good movement of things that you're going to use every time you interact with the vehicle those are just the types of things that you know you want to use to sell a car and if you're emotionally attached to a car or if you you know if you're if you're an automaker you kind of want your customers to be emotionally attached to these cars really decent backup screen you need the reverse screen on this cuz these cars got so high now because they're you know safety conscious they want you to have that side impact collision and rear and pedestrian safety that the cars are tall and it seems that they uh, compensated for how tall the car is and like the lack of visibility out of the rear and the front by making this windshield up super, super high. Same in the back, uh, which is kind of, it's an illusion. It's an illusion of visibility because I don't need the visibility to the sky. That, that's never going to help me avoid an accident. But who's the car for? I think this vehicle is meant for somebody who doesn't really have any passion for driving. And that's okay, that's a big market. And when you think about how much money a non-enthusiast has to spend to have a car. What a bummer, man. Like, I'm not a guitar enthusiast, so I don't have to spend 10 grand on a fancy guitar. A non-auto enthusiast still has to spend 10, 20, $30,000 just to get around. Like, that's a bummer when you really don't even like cars. So this is that car. This is the car that you buy because you're not really into cars. You wanna make sure that, you know, maybe it's grandma's car, maybe it's dad's car, maybe it's your kid's car, but you wanna make sure that they come home safely, that they don't get hurt, that if they are in an accident, that everything goes smoothly. Brings me to my next point, Subaru marketing. Uh, they market safety a lot, which is great. It's interesting when people do that, but the problem is they market them with like, really emotional, almost scary ads where they either show an impact or like right before an impact and then they show the wreckage of the car and you know, the guy looks at it and goes, they lived. That's a great ad to sell cars, but it also means that every time I'm in this car and I'm in the setting that I've seen in the commercial, I feel like I might be about to get into a horrible accident. I actually have like a little bit of trauma from the advertising when I'm in the car. 
I, I don't know how to shake that. And, 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 and Subaru balances that with their love ads, you know, love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru, which is sort of like just repeating things over and over again that aren't true to make them true because I feel very little love in this vehicle. I, I feel like nobody had any emotion. And I do feel like if that truck did go head on with me, I would rather be in this Subaru than my Porsche or even my BMW. So good on Subaru. I feel like I could survive the accident. Which is why I think the people who are dispassionate about cars, the people who are just using their car to get from A to B uh, and want to do it safely and do it for 200,000 miles with like basically no maintenance, this is the vehicle. That being said, it's hard to believe that the engineers, and maybe it's different people, who designed the STI had any part in this. It's hard to believe it's the same company because a Subaru STI out of the box, yes, I've said it's underpowered and a little underwhelming, but it handles really well. It's a phenomenal chassis. It's a lot of fun to drive. This doesn't give me that feeling. I actually feel like slightly un unconfident, inconfident, not confident, pitching it into a corner. Um, I'm not afraid to. It doesn't, it doesn't instill fear. It's still a rigid chassis, but I definitely don't get this vibe where I'm like, ooh, I can hang this out on the ragged edge. And again, it's not what it's designed for, but it feels like it wasn't designed by someone who even drives cars because on paper, this thing really ticks a lot of boxes and maybe that's their thing. Oh, not coming for me, please, please, please. Yay. Just kidding. I'm in this car. What could I have possibly done? Oh my goodness. S2000, see, that's a fun car. Wide open. Oh, what a dog. It doesn't give you all the power right away either. And it's like, the, the while the engine may have like a nice linear power band, it's like, oh my God, that was my doppelganger car. The transmission assures that you're not going to enjoy a linear experience. And whoever designed this thing, it's fine, except I, it's hard to find the buttons you need in a pinch. Like, I don't want to take my eyes off the road to find how to turn the fan down. So, technology. Let's, let's stop complaining about this car, because it does have pretty interesting technology, and that is very interesting to me. So let's say we throw up the uh, radar cruise control to 80 miles per hour. Now it's gonna accelerate, it's gonna bring us to that guy. You know how it works, not, not impressive stuff. But for a car under $30,000 that I can turn this button on, active down there, I don't know if you can see it, it might be a little bright or dark. Boom, car's driving itself, how great is that? Now you definitely can't just leave it because it's super, I don't trust it. But uh, you know, it's doing the thing, I'm pretty impressed. And it gives me my little lights, look, that guy's slowing down, we're slowing down, it's gonna bark at me in a second because my hands aren't on the wheel. Now. On its own, it does a pretty good job. If I just let go, it's gonna drive the car and it's gonna do it relatively smoothly. And look, this guy just came in my lane. I get some beeps, it's like, whoa, easy there, Tiger. Gonna back off. Very cool, very cool, guys. This is good stuff. This makes me happy for the future that I don't necessarily want self-driving cars, but the amount of people that are relentlessly texting, this is the kind of stuff that's gonna lower insurance premiums. I really believe that. Okay, the problem is it does a pretty good job on its own if I'm not touching it and it doesn't make me look drunk. If I'm actually holding my hands on the wheel and I'm starting to make inputs before it does, that's when this thing kind of ping pongs around a little bit and doesn't necessarily know how to hold a lane and it'll do, see what I mean? That's like, it's like slightly uncomfortable. I probably don't look sober, eh, not my favorite. We're getting there though. I'm like, I have to keep justifying this and being like, this car is like $26,000 and change. That's, oh my God. Can you believe that? That this is doing this for that much money? Amazing, amazing. It's way too easy to discount cars like this for being boring and I'm guilty of it. I mean, this car is incredibly smooth. It's, 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 it's well built for the price. It's doing all the things and it has a fairly interesting interior. I really like this space right here for the passenger. It's driving itself. Can we just like, I know I'm getting off on this, but like we need to really appreciate the technology that's going into cars for very little money. And I know we're not like autonomous driving, but it's holding my lane. If I were to glance over at something, at least I've got this safety net. Uh, the cancel features on this, I kind of wish there was a big button that just said like end because 
I've got to be able to, yeah, I know I'm keeping my hands on the steering wheel. You should trust me by now. There we go. There we go. Good car. Um, to cancel these features, you've got to hit buttons. Like they're not, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just cause I'm not used to the car. It doesn't feel that intuitive. Like I want a big, like, boom, we're over. It's canceled feature. Uh, it makes me nervous autonomy stuff I like to be able to you know you can always hit the brake and you're in your back in action um, passing speeds Oof. you gotta wait for that power which I don't understand it's a CVT shouldn't you just be anywhere it's continuously variable can't you just give me a red line like that why not um, okay stop complaining Tom Why can't I U-turn? No one's going. There's a cop. It's not like I'm, you know, I keep seeing cops while I'm driving this car thinking that like, oh, I better slow down. Nope, not speeding. There's no reason to speed in this thing. Nope, I should have gone. All right, so start, stop, right? We've stopped. It gives me a timer. I think when you reset the trip, it'll reset that timer. It'll tell you how much fuel you've saved by not idling in traffic. How cool is that? Cool. V6 Mustang. When this starts up again, you're going to notice it buck forward when it's in drive. It's going to do it because, yeah, man, like the car shakes. Look, I get it. I'm being like picky, but it's my job to kind of like pick out the nuanced things. These are the things that I notice when I'm driving it. And while all of these things are mostly forgivable, not talking about them would be disingenuous. So that's what I'm doing. All right. We're going to just wait for this light, make sure we have all the room in the world to play with here. And we're going to get on this on-ramp hard in the legacy. Why shift? Just hold red line, dude. Got a little more than I thought. Brakes on this are really nice. Overall, like it handles fine. It, 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 it actually isn't bad. Um, it's just soft. It's a soft car and somewhat refreshing because it means that you can go over potholes and like normal New England roads. And that's one thing that I think Subaru does really well. They build cars for the real world. They do build cars that are designed to be on public roads and deal with people who drive 63 miles per hour in the middle lane. Excellent. I'd also like to applaud Subaru for this steering wheel. Now, I don't really care about the buttons. I, I complained about that already, but the size of this wheel is so perfect. This is what a steering wheel should be. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow. Look at that, I can hit a bump in this car. Tons of sidewall, oof, absorbs it all, beautiful. And the rim, the, the, the actual wheel, is not too thick. I was in that SRT Durango the other day and it's like, you're driving like this, right? They give you this big monster wheel because they want you to feel like it's sporty. Like, I know it's sporty. I have a 6.4 liter Hemi, I'm listening to it. Uh, this is the correct size steering wheel. So automakers, take notice. Yes, maybe you want to leather wrap it a little better, but uh, whatever. What? Brakes are like actually really nice, very progressive, very normal. They feel exactly the way they should feel. And we'll do a little brake test here just so you can see. So we're just gonna stand on them for a second. Don't scare the traffic. See, thing comes down in a hurry, a little bit of noise just because we're on all seasons to be expected. They're gonna be noisy tires. They're gonna give you a lot of warning before anything bad happens. They don't break away. They're just gonna warn you that, hey, we are close to that limit. Let's ironically end this at flat out motorsports. <laughs> they do all kinds of race cars and stuff here. I don't know these guys, but I hear their cars on the dyno. They do a lot of Miata stuff. All right, <sighs> I, I don't wanna be scathing about this. It's a fine car, it really is. Subarus of the past, I think, got their following because even though they were not particularly fast cars, they had a sense of adventure. They were exciting, people were loyal, and 
on paper, this does so much. It is such an incredible package for the money. It's insane how much technology you get with it and the safety features. And if that's what's important to you, this is a really great option. I don't know that new buyers who care about the driving experience are going to be sold on the technology and the features and creature comforts of this car at the price point solely because of those features because the driving experience is really dull. Yeah, that's all I've got to say about it. I mean, it is a good car and it's frustrating because I don't want to just, I don't want to crap all over it. It's not fair to it because its job is to be a people carrier. But if you told me that the engineers who designed this car don't really drive cars and they take the train to work every day, it would make a lot of sense to me. So that being said, don't overlook this, uh, especially for your friends that you're suggesting to, because I assume anyone watching this video is probably an enthusiast. So if you have friends who are like, hey, I'm trying to get a car and I wanted to do this, 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 and this, and you also know that they're a probably terrible driver who texts all the time, like eyesight and all this like technology stuff, this could be really good for them and keep them alive and other people alive. Uh, but if you're suggesting a car for someone who's like excited about driving, who likes the driving experience, um, I might steer them in another direction. So thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Huge thanks to the Patreon supporters who have made this channel possible. It means the world to me. Don't forget to check out the podcast, Respect the Drive, on Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcasts. And of course, I'm repeating myself, but don't forget to respect the drive. I will see you in the next one. But first, let's talk about the logistics behind something like that because it honestly feels like drunk driver mode in two ways. One, drunk drivers can use that to make sure that they're driving in their lane and getting home safely even though they've made the poor, dangerous decision to get behind the wheel. Two, it ping pongs in the lane a little bit. So you do actually look drunk, which maybe is the safety feature behind it to make sure that drunk drivers don't get away with drunk driving because you kind of look drunk when you're using it. Yeah, on the highway though, it does okay.